Okay guys, today we got a new project. It's a 2008 Mustang GT. This has the 4.6 liter three valve motor, a Triton motor. And what we're gonna be doing today is changing spark plugs. So on this motor, as the spark plugs are right behind these coil packs. So there's a coil pack on each cylinder. You have to take those off. One thing that's a little different on this motor is the two-piece spark plugs so these have a reputation of breaking off in the motor and they're difficult to get out so this is the replacement plug I bought it's a champion that's the number right there if you're interested in getting these these have a one-piece shell on them see how long the snout is extended well, this is the part that will break off if you has the original two-piece spark plugs in there. And they did this for a lot of years. Uh, here's the truck years they did. And uh, Ford issued a technical service bulletin. Here's the number for it. And it's a guide to help you get your spark plugs out without breaking them, hopefully. And if they do break, there's also information on that TSB, how to remove the broken plugs. But I suggest get some of these platinum plugs from Champion to replace them if you have them. Now for the uh, Mustang, the 4.6, it was 2005 through 2008. And you can tell there's a sticker in the door jam that'll tell you it's right here that'll tell you the year there'll be a year date on there uh, if yours was a late model 2008 you may not have the two-piece spark plugs in it there's other ways to tell too there's a uh, I think I believe something with the color of the coil pack May have something to do with it. I thought I read something about that. But I'm pretty sure this one, this one was made, it's a 2008, but it was made in 2007. Late, so it was an early model, one of the early ones. And I'd say it definitely has a two piece one in there. It has about 140,000 miles on it. And it's getting a miss under heavy load. So you're going up a hill in fifth gear it'll uh, start bucking and missing on you. So I'm pretty sure spark plugs are, their gap, the gap has opened way up on them. So I'm gonna do how you, uh, basically this TSB, I can get it down to a nutshell for you. What you do is you warm up your motor a little bit. Don't get it too hot, just warm to the touch. So if you can touch your valve cover without burning your hand, that's warm enough. If you do it when the motor's cold, there's a greater chance you're gonna break off your spark plug inside the cylinder, down in the hole. Uh, or if the engine is too hot, also, you'll end up breaking them off. Better chance of stripping the threads in the cylinder heads also. So you want it warmed up, but not too hot. Just run it for you know 10-15 minutes and then let it hot soak and cool down a little bit and then uh, what you do is you take your I'm gonna go through this and I'll show you basically one of the cylinders I'll do and uh, take off your your coil pack there's a small bolt right there you can see that Take that off, pull the coal pack out, and then what you're gonna want to do is, if you can, crack the spark plug loose just an eighth of a turn, just barely break them loose, and don't try to turn them out. Just break them loose slightly, and then spray penetrating oil like PB blaster down into the hole, fill the hole up, and let them sit for 20 minutes. And then you try to work your plug out. You can turn it a little bit, tighten it, turn it, tighten it, go back and forth to work that uh, 
pen train oil in there. So we're going to get going. We're going to try one of these and we'll see what happens. Hopefully I don't break off all these spark plugs and have to uh, remove them with that special tool. Okay guys, before you start any work on your motor, first thing you're going to want to do is get an air hose and blow all the dirt from around those uh, spark plug holes there. What you're going to want to do is there's a, a small bolt like this holding the coil packs on. Well, first pull your coil pack wires off. Let me give you a close up here. So they pull these coil pack wires off, all of them, and then take out these bolts here and then. Pull out your coal packs. Okay, so there's your coal pack. And this is the little bolt that holds them on. I'm going to keep those in my pocket. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to blow down in the hole with some more air just to make sure. All the dirt has been out of there. Close up view what that looks like here. So here's the spark plug holes. You can see a spark plug down in the hole there. There's quite a bit of dirt around the rim here of those inserts. So okay so I'm getting ready to back them spark plugs out a little bit. So I'm gonna do is just crack them loose not even an eighth of a turn, just break them loose and then I'm going to spray PB Blaster down in the holes and let that soak. So wish me luck here. I got a 16 millimeter. I'm going to try this first snowman here. The uh, factory plugs, or whatever plug is in there, is a little smaller hex on it. Let's try 15. The uh, replacement plugs are a 16 millimeter. We'll try 14, see if it's in there. That's it, it's a 14. I'm not sure what plug's in there. Okay, it, it loosened just a tiny bit. There's a lot of resistance. I mean, a lot of resistance. I'm really turning on them. If you go by that technical service bulletin, says not more than 33 foot pounds so you could take a foot pound wrench and put it on there not I notice it'll turn like that much hopefully that's in frame but I'm noticing I can turn the wrench about that much and then there's a bunch of resistance so they're breaking loose but then there's a lot of resistance after that so this may have the original plugs in it still okay it turned so next we take our penetrating all PV blaster and fill that hole up
I say to do is fill it to the hex on the spark plug. So if it's spark plug sitting in there, you want to fill with pentrain all up to here. And you want to be careful not to get too much in there. You might hydrolock your motor. But just that much from there to there. Just enough to cover it. Hopefully that will soak in on those threads. We'll come back in about 20 minutes. We'll try to work one loose. I'll show you what that looks like inside the cylinder. Or down inside the, uh, the hole where the spark plug sit. Zoom in on one of these. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, well that one, this side is soaking here. I'm going to go on to the other side and start taking all the coal packs off of that side. Alright, it's been about a half an hour. It's been soaking. So I'm going to try taking out that first plug here. We'll see what happens. I'm going to give it a tighten. But you don't want to tighten hardly at all. I'll twist and it moved a bit. I'm going to go back tight again. Weird because uh, it doesn't seem to want to. Those plugs are in there. I have a feeling they're going to break off. They're very, very tight. As I loosen them a little bit and I go to try to tighten them, they don't want to turn. So I'd say these are probably the original plugs. So I'm just going to probably work them a little bit and then let them sit some more. Looks like the penetrating lube is still in the cylinder, in the uh, spark plug holes. I'm just going to kind of work them, each one of them a little bit, just back and forth a little. Hmm. Yeah, they loosen a tiny bit, and then when you go to try to retighten them, they don't budge. Definitely seized in there. That one. That one turned a little bit. I don't want to go any tighter though. I can loosen that. Tiny bit. Turn it just not even quarter of a turn, just the tiniest bit. I'm gonna let them sit like that. So they're definitely seized in there. So I'm just gonna take my time with it, just loosen them a little bit at a time. Let them soak some more. Okay guys, it's been well over a month. I've been taking the spark plugs out of this Mustang. 
This is one of the Mustangs with the two-piece plugs. So here's what I bought for replacement plugs. And I finally got the last one loose. This one, I soaked them all with PB Blaster, as I showed earlier in the video. This was the last one. Passenger side, one very back. That one was stuck. So I let it sit for a week with PB Blaster in there. Finally, it's come loose. So give it plenty of time. Don't rush it, guys. You're going to end up breaking your spark plugs off. I mean, I, I took my time. I absolutely took my time. Hopefully you have another car you can drive if you have to change plugs on one of these cars or the pickup truck like an F-150 with these same uh, goofy two-piece plugs. These things are terrible. Get a cup of coffee before you start. But I'm getting ready pull them all out and I've got some of this it's a nickel anti-seize it's not just your aluminum and I see it's got a nickel on it I'm gonna put a little bit of that on the new spur plugs and hopefully I'll never have this problem again so it's terrible uh, thank God I didn't break any off though that would have been a whole lot worse Okay guys, to get the sparkles out of the hole, because they're way down in the head, I'm using a magnetic pickup tool. To get it to grab on. There's one. And you can see. Just take a look at that. Just zoom this out a little bit. See what happens is all that carbon builds up on the end. Of the spark plug and then they just don't want to move because this is real tight in the head here there's not a lot of play and this this part ends up breaking off so that's one of them okay guys just take a look this is 140,000 miles on this plug it's been in there that long <clears throat> look at the gap compared to the one on the left that's uh the new plugs I'm putting in. These are one piece plugs. It's crazy. I'm surprised the motor even ran with uh, these plugs in there. Okay, before I put the new plugs in, I'm just taking a little bit of this nickel hand I seize. Don't go too much. Just in uh, two little dots. What I'm doing. See how much is on there. Okay, so I'm just taking the uh, new spark plugs. I'm just dropping them down in the hole. I tried using the spark plug socket. I've got a spark plug socket there with a little rubber piece like this that grips onto the porcelain part of your uh, spark plug. But every time I would uh, turn one in and pull the socket off the spark plug. The little rubber piece was uh, staying on the plug because it's a pretty tight fit. So the ground electrode is pretty thick on these. I don't think it'll bend it. I was afraid it would uh, bend that ground electrode and change the gap, but it's it's really thick. So I don't think that'll be a problem. Just uh, take them and put them in the hole. Drop them down in there. There you go, guys. All eight plugs out without breaking them. Okay, I've got all the plugs, the new plugs, put in their holes. Okay, next, I got to put all the coils back in. And I'm going to put a little bit of NICs on these screws that hold the coals now too because they're going into aluminum.
Okay guys, so that was a one cup of coffee job putting all this back together. Ah, yeah. So, getting ready to fire it up. First time in about a month. I took the uh, ground terminal off the battery. Because yep. it's been sitting so long. We'll see if it fires up and uh, see how much smoke it makes. I'm mean, just going to smoke like a freaking freight train because of the, all that uh, PB blaster I poured down in the spark plug holes. Okay guys, this is going to be the first start in well over a month. Got everything all put back together. I'm going to come back in the back here because I want to see how much smoke comes out of this back into this. Go ahead and crank it one time. It may have to clear out all that uh, PB blaster in the cylinders, so it may not start right away. spark plugs out of there but if you take your time soak them real good you'll get them out without breaking them <laughs> 